Fall Off is one of the hotter and flashier tools in the Motion 3 plugin, and it's always fun to find an excuse to use it. You can make these really awesome interactive animations with a controller. So in this video, we're going to take a look at three examples. These red hot squares, this wall of eyeballs, and this interactive mobile mock-up. As always, links and discounts can be found in the description below. So let's get into it. All right, so for anybody who's been watching this series, I explained something wrong in the overview video when I was showing fall off off. And so I owe you an apology, and for that, I'm very sorry. So we're going to set the record straight in this video when I'm showing you how to do this. So let's first get this out of the way on how to use fall off properly, okay? So I'm going to start a new composition. Let's throw down some nice red squares. I'll duplicate this a few times. Let's just make some squares here. All right. Great. So where did we go wrong? Well, what I said was that when we're making a fall off controller, we want to, let's say, if we're going to do it on opacity, we're going to reveal all of the opacities here, select all of them and click on a fall off control. Okay. So then if I have this fall off control, and I say, okay, let's now change one of these to negative 100. Now this fall off control is going to make a different control for each one of these opacities. So why is this wrong? Well, it's not necessarily wrong, but this is not an intended use of the fall off because this makes a different fall off control for every single layer. So, I mean, this could be okay, but now we have to make a different amount for each one of these. So if I wanted this one to be, so I wanted, if I wanted all of these to be controlled by the same amount, all go to negative 75 opacity, I'm gonna have to type in negative 75 on each one of these like this, okay? Now I could, if I wanted these to be separate amounts, I could do that, I can make these all, be different kind of values here, like this. And now they're gonna be affected differently. Now, if this is not what you want, if you wanted to make one control, one opacity control to affect everything, we're gonna set this up differently. So let me just go ahead and undo this. And here's what you do. Let's untwirl or retwirl, whatever you wanna call it, these. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of these layers, but just one opacity. Doesn't matter which one, just one opacity and all of the other layers, and then click fall off. And now this is smart enough to know to just create one opacity, and we can bring this down to whatever amount, negative 53. And now this is gonna create that nice one controller for all of these. Cool. And so now we could change these all. So let's say, you know, maybe we wanted these to start at 10 opacity and they get brighter to 65, something like this, right? And they get revealed. We could do that. Now, there could be a use case where you want them to have individual amounts, like a position, right? So if we select the position and we grab all these and we want to add this to this controller so we grab all of these positions and then we also grab onto the controller and we click fall off again now this is smart enough to just add these new position properties onto this fall off master so if i want this one to kind of maybe we want all these to like shoot away from the center here so i'll find this one whichever one this is i don't know i'm just going to play around with it okay here now we can just push all of these individually like this. See? So there are use cases for having multiple properties 
and one singular property. You just have to know when to use them. And you can always just add new properties on to the same controller after you've already made it. And then we have kind of two ways to change this, this selecting zone, the, the zone that interacts with this. You can see that this isn't get affected until this red zone hits. So we could make it bigger on the actual layer like this. See, that's going to affect it. But we can also change it here, this fall off zone here, like this. And now when we change this area here, this is kind of changing like the taper of it, like a feathered amount kind of. So if we make it really big like this, it's going to be kind of a really harsh amount, see? See how it's affecting it in a really harsh way? It just kind of snaps it, the position out like this versus if we change the fall off to be really low, like this, it's gonna have a much smoother kind of feathered amount. So you can play around with this fall off amount here to give it a more softer approach. And then obviously you could click this to invert it and this will just invert any effects that you have put on, okay? And then you can just always, like we said earlier, add on any new effects. So let's say we also wanted to add a rotation. We'll just click R, but I only want to add on a rotation to one if I want to make these all rotate the same amount. So I will click the rotation on one property, grab all of them, and then click on our controller and add a fall off for rotation. Click on any amount that we want like this, and now, they will all rotate like this. And we have set up a nice fall off. Okay, now let's check out another example. So something you might not expect is that you can use fall off with pretty much any effect or any keyframeable property, really anything in After Effects. So I have this wall of pre-comps. They are all just this layer of this eyeball blinking and I want these to kind of play in a more random or not random way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all of these layers here, all of these pre-comps, and let's add some time remapping to them. So let me just grab all of these layers and then grab one of these time remaps and then let's put this onto a fall off. Cool. So on our fall off control, now we can change the amount that the time remap is happening and this is going to be in seconds here let's make this controller a little bit bigger like this maybe change the softness of this time remap so now if we move around this fall off control it's just affecting the time remap of these um, pre-comps it's just affecting how they are playing back so if we play this back you can see that these are going to be affected by five seconds of time remapping. Now the other ones are playing back, the ones that aren't being affected are playing back at, at regular time, but we could just delete the time remap keyframes off of them or something. So we could take all these end keyframes here and just delete these. So now no actual um, time is playing back, no time remapping is happening, and then just these are getting like revealed, if you will, just these are getting time remapped. But now the thing is, this is just time remapping as this is moving around. So maybe what I could do is I could add a dynamics, a wiggle effect to this actual fall off amount. Because like I said, all of these pr tools in here are made to work together. Very cool. So let's pull down one of these effects here. What do we want? We want this fall off amount, this X amount. So let's find this in here. Where are you? Come on, little guy. Where are you? This X amount. Click on this X amount, add a dynamics, and let's see what's happening. That's, that's crazy. It's going to make me freak out. So maybe we want to change the amount down. 250 seconds, that's, that's a lot. Maybe three seconds and every one second. So it could just be something like this. And then we could also make the, the position of this uh, have a dynamics too, right? So it's just 
doing something like this. I mean, this is weird and it's crazy and I'm not gonna just do this animation in front of you while you're watching, but you get the idea, okay? Let's move on to the next example. This is the one that everyone wants to see. I got a lot of messages about it, so let's go into it. So you can actually use fall off to make these really nice mobile mock-ups, okay? This is not a screen recording of my iPhone, believe it or not. This is made in After Effects using fall off. And I'm gonna show you how to set this up really simply. All right, so let's open up my comp where it's not set up and I will show you how. So let's start off with a simple one, right? If we have this text here and maybe we just want this text to, let's say, scale up and change opacity. So let me grab the scale here, click S, and I'm also going to add on the opacity at the same time so I have the scale open and I'll shift and hit T to reveal opacity at the same time and then grab these other two layers here and let's add this to a fall off, okay? So I think I want the scale to get bigger, let's say maybe 25 and we want this to be proportional so we need to add this to all of these amounts here like that and let's say we want the opacity amount to like 50 but we need these to start at 50 percent opacity like that right so when this hovers over it's like that and you know this zone isn't right right now it's kind of hovering over two at once but um we'll fix that okay and then i also just want my cursor to be parented in the middle of this like this so it follows it around Great. Okay, so now let's get these icons all rigged up. So we wanna work on the fill of these little icons. And you can see how I have this built is, each one of these is a shape. And, and for the record, I didn't actually build these, I downloaded them online, and I'll put a little link in the description of where I got them. But they have, um, each one of these shapes, it has an ellipse and it has the little line icon built into it. So if I twirl down this shape, you can see the contents has this thing, this has t-shirt and has ellipse one. And this is gonna be important here that the naming of these is right. So each one of these has ellipse one and then whatever named thing. And if it wasn't named, if each one of these wasn't named ellipse one, then there would be a little problem with fall off locating it, right? If it was named um, square one or something like that, there wouldn't be consistency in it being able to find it. So I'll explain that a little more in a second, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this first ellipse one, twirl it down to the fill, grab the, the color. And so we have two options here basically. We can make these all hover um, and get the same color or a different color. So if I just want them to all get the same color, then I'll just grab one fill one color, grab all of them, grab on our controller, and then click fall off like this, okay? And so now they should all have a fill color like this. And like I was saying, this fall off tool is very smart. It knows to grab every single fill color of ellipse one, but it's not Einstein, okay? It, it only knows to look for ellipse one fill, so it doesn't grab the fill color of anything not named ellipse one, all right? So now if I want these all to be different fill colors, I'm just gonna undo this real quick. Then what I would wanna do is let me grab the color of this one and highlight all of these and then click grab now I have grabbed this fill one color of all of these individually and then click fall off and then add a new fall off. Now I have, I can change different colors for each one of these. I can do a pink, I can do a green, I can do an orange, I can do uh, another orange, I can do another pink, etc. So now if I move this around, get different colors like this. Great. Now, what else can we do? We can add a scale to this. Grab the scale of one, click onto the fall off, 
it adds another fall off. Now we have a scale up. Now this added the scale of the other ones to this. It took the scale that we already have established from there. Cool, that's great. Now if we wanted a different scale, let's say we wanted these to have a different scale than this scale, what we could do is undo this, undo that scale, and maybe grab a different scale property. So right now we're using the just overall layer scale, right? But we could grab maybe the ellipse scale here, like this. Grab this transform scale of this ellipse, and then grab all of these, and then add that to the fall off control. So now we have a different scale. This is just of the ellipse, like this. See? Boom, 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 boom. So the fall off tries to make things clean as possible and give you the least amount of controls in a good way. And then one more little thing. Let's say that you make a mistake, um, which is something that you might do. I don't really ever do that, so I wouldn't know, but if you do, um, let's say you don't want this property on here. Um, so let's say we're gonna go ahead and delete that yellow fill, um, and that was on, which layer was that? That was on this layer. Um, so now we're gonna have some missing expressions that are here. I'm gonna double click E to reveal them. So we're gonna have this little expression, and if we wanna go, and go ahead and clear that up, we're just gonna use our trash here to just go ahead and remove that um, fall off expression that was on here. And we can use that trash to go ahead and just remove anything that we don't want on any of our controls. That is just a nice clean way to remove anything that we have applied from the motion panel onto any of our layers. All right. All right, so that wraps up the fall off overview. As usual, please let me know if you have any comments, questions, or concerns. And you can use the links and discounts in the description below. And please let me know which tool you would like me to do a deep dive of next. And thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.